Welcome back to Table Talk. We are still talking about Montlow and Skills USA. I am back with the famous mentor, Mr. Joe Marco, and Mr. Larry Flat. Welcome to the show, guys. Hi, thank you. Yeah, I want to ask you a little bit. Obviously, you've taught these girls very well and been a source of inspiration to them. Tell me about Skills USA and what all other than, I mean, it's a huge organization and, and there's lots of opportunities there. <coughs> it is It is a huge organization. I think there's over 100,000 members total. Um, and it, it's it's nationwide all the states participate it has over 130 different cte uh disciplines from like the like the girls that said cosmetology robotics H, uh, hvac all these different events uh <clears throat> what it really is is a tool it's a great tool for the students to get their names out there get themselves out there because like i tell them all <clears throat> when they apply for a job the first thing they see on there is experience required even if it's an entry-level job mm -hmm. well how do we get experience and when we how do you get experience when you're still in school mm -hmm. well skills usa is the hands-on experience that employers are looking for uh employers like nissan deloitte uh 3m they're all partners at the national level so when they see these certificate the the, the mm -hmm. certificates that you draw out of skills usa they recognize those and when you put it on a job application they recognize those Colleges have skills as a program, so when you're applying to four-year universities for scholarships and things like that, that's all stuff that's considered. And no matter what, like I told these girls, when we went to state, you were selected from 150 of your peers. Bullet number one on their resume, on their college application, was selected from over 150 of my peers to represent Motlow State Community College at mm -hmm. Tennessee Skills USA. Mm -hmm. Right. Right there, that was just something more than the person next to them have. So Skills USA is a huge tool for students to leverage to put themselves out there and put themselves above their peers when it yeah. comes to uh, getting into the market. And that's so, yeah, uh, important for scholarships, for opportunities in the job market and things like that. So Larry, tell me how Motlow is kind of working with Skills USA. This, you said you all have been working with them about two years about now. About two years. Uh, it has been around, obviously, for several years, but Motlow, uh, as we have improved our CTE offerings and have grown our programs, I had the privilege of being Dean of Career and Technical a couple of years back. That's when I first met Joe and uh, the work he was doing at Stewart's Creek, but he also adjunct at our Moore County campus, uh, Smyrna campus, and uh, still will be doing that. Mm -hmm. And so the opportunities just morphed from a relationship of growing uh, those dual enrollment cybersecurity programs at the high school and also at Motlow. Motlow has the largest dual enrollment population mm -hmm. of all the community colleges in the state of Tennessee, uh, thanks to Sally Pack and, and those that work in her department. So the opportunity to now step forward and offer our students that opportunity to grow their skills, be seen. Joe mentioned Nissan. Nissan is a huge supporter of Skills USA to the point that they hire several students from across the state of Tennessee and other skills locations because they come to Chattanooga each year, they evaluate those students, they see them, they, sometimes they even interview them in Chattanooga and then make them an offer. Mm -hmm. And Joe, you said that um, you know, Skills has a wide, wide variety of things you can participate in, but it all is mostly hands-on stuff. Is that right? It's all hands-on. <clears throat> what it does, another aspect of Skills that I really didn't hit on is the, the well-roundedness it, it, it takes from the student. <clears throat> so before your competition even starts, you got to submit a job resume. Mm -hmm. Every competition across the board, all 132 of them, skills. you have to submit a job resume. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now... The contents isn't really what's important because it really the fact that you were able to structure it, mm -hmm. punctuate it, do the grammar, and, and, and do those things. Uh, <clears throat> so you submit that. And then the next step is your job interview. They actually conduct an interview for all of them. Mm -hmm. And then after the interview, they check your uniform to make sure you're in uniform compliance. Mm -hmm. These are three evaluated steps before you even, even competed. You haven't even competed yet, and you're already being evaluated in the skills that young people are lacking coming into our industry today. And I go to all the tech councils, from National Tech Council, Murfreesboro Tech Council, Cyber Huntsville, 
Um, I go to all of them. And the one thing employers are saying is we're missing these things. Mm -hmm. um, and Skills USA kind of puts the stamp on these students when they come out. If, if you won nationals, you can do these things. If you won state, you can do these things. Mm -hmm. If you were selected by your instructor to represent your school, you can do these things or else they wouldn't have selected you. Um, and then you get into your competition where you can actually, they're all hands on. Again, criminal justice, auto body. I can go on for days about right. the different competitions they have. Mm -hmm. uh, we had one student that was supposed to compete in cybersecurity, lost his partner. He switched from cybersecurity to extempor extemporaneous speaking. So he, <laughs> he had the last job. minute, and he won third in Tennessee. Uh -huh. First and second place decided not to go to nationals. He took their place, and he took first in the nation at extemporaneous speaking, and he was supposed to compete in cybersecurity. Yeah. So um, it's there's all kinds of things there for them to do, and uh, it, it's, it truly is a tool uh, for these teachers and instructors or professors or whatever they want to call themselves to launch these students into their careers or a pathway at least. Well, as you said, it's so important not to just be smart or not to just be techy. It's, it's the skills all the way around, how you communicate, how you can work with others, your leadership skills, all of that is so important in the workforce. Um, I guess you all kind of probably really appreciate uh, and can tell a difference, I would think, in the students that do participate in Skills USA. Oh, no doubt. Uh, and I would expand on what Joe said today. Uh, at 10 o'clock this morning, as I was driving to Laverne to meet with the world's largest publishing company that is in Laverne, uh, I had a call from a small company in Manchester that says, we need people, we can't find people that ex exhibit what Joe was just talking about. They don't know how to dress. They don't know how to come to work. They don't know how to perform when they get to work. Mm -hmm. So what skills is teaching these young men and women are those attributes that make them highly employable. When I got to this publishing company, we spent two hours talking about the exact same thing. We need skilled, trained, dedicated, and uh, individuals who will take the initiative, who will come to work every day, who will learn and grow up the ladder. So mm -hmm. every company, for the most part, that I talk to, and I talk to hundreds <laughs> in a month or so uh, at the Motlow campus, are all struggling with the skills that are lacking. And so Skills USA picks up a significant portion of that in the in the beginning part, the interview and the dress and those kind of things. Well, and seeing, um, I, I think of I, a few years ago, I went to 4-H, uh, the state competition that they have. And then I come to my, you know, think about Miriam and Gabby and the good things you do see out of this generation. Um, and, you know, maybe it's not something they've been modeled um, in school or growing up, but it is still, you know, through through programs like Skills USA, it kind of helps them kind of mold yourself. I, I know at 20 something years old, I probably could not have participated in what, um, and spoke as well as they do. So that's such a big help to, to anybody. Yeah. And, go and, ahead. And, and this program uh, no doubt exacerbates and, and promotes those things that you and I might have not been able to do when we were 18 or 19 years old. Mm -hmm. When I took speech at college, I hung up, I was hanging on to the podium and <laughs> trying not to read my notes and do all those things that these two young ladies today did very well. Uh, but the, the relationship with Skills USA gives us the ability to continue to grow and expand the CTE, uh, hands-on kind of programs that we do uh, career and technical, if you don't know what CTE mm -hmm. stands for, okay. career and technical education. And by doing that, we have one of the largest growing cybersecurity programs in, in the community college system. Uh, we're going to expand that into McMinnville in August of 24. Uh, uh, we already offer it in Moore County and Fayetteville mm -hmm. and Smyrna, but we, we don't ha yet have it here. With the addition to our robotics and uh, building here, we will be offering cyber here. But it also has opened up other pathways 
uh, in other programs that traditionally have been more of the TCAP programs yes. as opposed to the community college programs. Yeah. Well, and as I was going to uh, mention too about, you had highlighted about the certifications. So many employers are looking for these certifications. I know uh, part of your notes you sent me was Cisco uh, is participating, I think, in Skills USA competitions <coughs> too. Cisco actually runs the national um, internetworking competition, which Miriam competed in this year. Mm -hmm. uh, she, instead of, when she passed cabling over to Gabriel, she ran, uh, she competed in Cisco Internetworking, but she took first in the state again, mm -hmm. which wasn't a surprise. And then she took 10th in the nation, uh, which, which also wasn't a surprise. She, you know, I knew she would come out on top. Um, but I would like to say one quick thing before we run out of time. I want to thank Larry for introducing us to Ben Lohman and Ben Lohman for lending us all the tools that we needed to help prepare Gabriel for going into the competition. Um, it, there's no doubt in my mind that going into nationals, we had a much better shot because of the, uh, uh, the, the, the fiber optic tools and things that, it lent, that they lent us to help get her prepared. Well, that's great. I'm, I'm glad to hear that we were able to help in that. And, and students like Gabrielle and uh, Miriam are going to be the people that we and others in our industry look to hire, whether it's, you know, they, they move on and work at Cisco or cybersecurity, and they may be, you know, in the TBI or CIA or something yep, at some point. Absolutely. Who knows? There's all kinds of opportunities they out can, there. They can replace Greg. That's right. Well, well we won't, right. <laughs> yeah, um, hopefully not, not anytime yeah. soon. <laughs> but, but I will say that the call went out uh, right after or right before state saying we don't have any cable and so a qu uh, just a quick phone call to greg and whoever else i talked to mm -hmm. maybe and chad and jack and the next uh -huh. thing you know i had 200 feet of fiber optic cable that they were able to use to go to state and then it turns out motlow was so new to this we didn't have the tools mm -hmm. and so the call went out greg i know reached out to the broadband association and a huge amount of tools two spools of a fiber optic and cat five cable i think were donated fiber splicing kit uh all, everything everything needed to terminate fiber to terminate copper everything mm -hmm. good good well thank you both for joining us today this has been very interesting this is something that i know little of nothing about so i've tried to absorb all this even though you work in telecommunications there's many aspects of it so thank you and it's exciting to know that Montlow is adding this to their uh class schedule in mcminville uh coming up you said next august, august is that right when the new building will be complete mm -hmm. so we we got to have a laboratory to be able to do that so yeah. august of 24 maybe september 24 the building should be complete and uh, we'll be offering it in the fall semester of 24. Uh, and not only is it cyber the all the robots used at state competition year this year came from motlo mm -hmm. and we took them to chattanooga <laughs> so we're we're in it for the kind of le yeah leadership in that right. aspect too and thank you mr marco for like inspiring these young people and teaching them uh their award winners so that says a lot about you <laughs> And I'll say thank you to our audience for joining us today. We hope you found this show interesting. And come back again next week for more Table Talk.